Hello all, welcome to a new episode of GitHub Copilot. Today's episode we are looking at Copilot dashboard, especially the Copilot APIs. GitHub provided two set of APIs, one set for getting the Copilot usage metrics at organization and enterprise level and another set of APIs for Copilot user management. If you look at the documentation, a detailed documentation is provided in terms of integration with any of the automation stacks like JavaScript. It's provided how to construct the request and treat the response kind of thing. And the response schema is defined in detail, including the field descriptions, which explain what exactly each of the field is doing. So this information will help you to define a proper dashboard using any of the dashboarding mechanisms like a Power BI reports or a Grafana dashboard. Quickly, you can configure using this API. But today, as a GitHub user, we are looking at how to leverage GitHub platform as a whole to define a dashboard, get the API data, store it in the platform itself and display the dashboard in the platform itself. So we defined a dashboard template. Before going in details of the template, let us create a new repository or new dashboard and see how quickly we can span a new dashboarding experience. So I'm going to create a new repository out of that and selecting my organization and giving a name test dashboard. And if required, some description can be provided here. And I'm going to create the dash this particular repository. This span the repository. And once the repository is available, obviously we need to do a few of the settings uh, that is listed under the readme file. So let us start with the initial setup. We need a pad token with a specific permissions and add the token as a secret in your repositories secret section. So go to the repository settings, secrets, actions, and add the new repository secret. I'm adding it secret here. And the next element requirement is you need to pass the organization name, whichever is the organization, go to the variable section and define the organization name as a new variable. So here I'm passing the org name as Octodemo added this variable. So there are two settings. One is the secret. There's a pad token, then a variable. Now the repository is ready. You can directly go to the actions and you have two actions. Either you wait for the next scheduled run of the action, or if you want quickly see how the dashboard looks like, go to the copilot metrics and seats API process and kickstart this action. This workflow will access the metrics and seats API capture the data and store in the repository itself. As the metrics API is providing only 28 days data, you can schedule this workflow weekly so that the workflow capture the delta one week data or two weeks data and add upon to the existing storage. So the JSON data is a storage where we can add more, more than 28 days or you can retain the metrics data. So once this workflow completes, it kickstart another workflow for building and deploying the Copilot dashboard. So this is in progress. Once this workflow completes, you will have a new branch for the configuration. So as we are using GitHub as a platform for storing the data and deployment, the deployment is into the pages. So go to the settings, pages. This is the second setting you need to do. Specify that deploy from a branch and select the branch. As of now, we have only main as the branch. Wait for the completion of this workflow. You will get one more branch. So let me refresh this page. Maybe the new branch came here. Yeah, as you can see, there is a DH pages. This is the new branch added as part of our build workflow. Click on save. This in turn start a new workflow, which is co not configured. It's an automatic process. 
So just refresh the actions. You can see a third workflow came here and it's in progress. It's a pages build and deployment. It's an automatic workflow. Once you complete the pages configuration, it gets started. So any modification on the branch, the branch we configured here, it automatically start the workflow and redeploy the data into the pages. So the workflow contains a build and deployment step. Once the deployment complete, you will have the URL available here itself. So let us wait for the deployment workflow to complete. Once it's complete, your dashboard is ready and hosted in the GitHub as a platform or in the GitHub pages, the workflow will be hosting the Copilot dashboard. Either you can wait for this deployment to complete or you go ahead and look at the initial place. That's a code tab. You can see the deployments here. Go to the deployment section. So in the all deployment, you have the pages URL. Once you open that one, you will be able to get the complete dashboard information. So how many users, suggestions, total acceptance and everything. And also the code completion metrics are available here. And on clicking off a particular day, you have a drill down capability coming down. How many editors are for that particular date, which editors is used and the languages used on that particular day and the user behavior over the 28 days kind of thing. And Copilot chat metrics is also available. That is also displayed. And you have two metrics as I mentioned, Copilot metrics and seat usage. The seat usage is the uh, how the assigned seats are used data. It's coming here. You have the total seat, active and inactive user information, and it's provide a capability for sorting using particular column that's uh, available right now. So this is the dashboard currently available, which is hosted in your repository or as part of your repository in a pages model. And either it's the page information is available as part of the workflow completion step itself, or you go to the home page or the code of the repository and deployments, you will be able to see the pages URL. Now, how we did this one, this template is using GitHub as a repository altogether. So as we did the secrets and variable, these are the two inputs required, a GitHub token and organization name. And the first workflow have two actions, the Copilot metrics retention action, which uh, get the metrics data and retain over that period, not only 28 days, more days information will be captured and the usage report will give the seat information. So this data is added as part of the Angular application. In the assets folder, we are adding these two JSON files. And once this workflow complete, it's kickstart the build and deployment of this Angular application into the GitHub pages. So we are using the repository as a storage mechanism for the application as well as the data and pages for deploying our dashboard. So in case you are interested to stay in GitHub as a platform for dashboarding elements, instead of moving to a dashboarding application, you can take the same approach for any kind of dashboards out of GitHub. As GitHub provides a lot of APIs, different metrics in terms of the issues closed, issues opened, daily information on the commits, code changes, PRs completed, all informations are available as APIs and you have the corresponding actions in our marketplace. You can take one of the actions or you can write quickly a new action to export this API response into a JSON file and then deploy to pages. So the dashboards stay in your pages or in your GitHub platform itself and it's automatically authenticated or authorized with your GitHub credentials. So I will be passing this template information. If you are interested, you can explore it further. 
and see how you can use GitHub as a platform for storing and deploying small dashboards across multiple services, not only really Copilot, any services in GitHub. Thank you.